the story is not finished yet. Every great story starts with ordinary people. Spider-Man, just Peter Parker, an ordinary kid in love with the girl next door. Luke Skywalker was a farmer on the planet of Tatooine before he found the message from the princess in need of rescue. Cinderella was just a poor girl living with her evil stepmother and her jealous stepsisters before she met the very godmother and her life was completely changed. And I'm sure you have your own familiar stories in your own movie legend. These are all great stories. But extraordinary story is exactly what happened when God's story meets your story. Do you believe that God may want to do something incredible in your life? The book of Luke and Acts are two volumes of a single work. Together, they tell the story of how God first invited the people of Israel and then all nations to follow Jesus. In the first volume, the movement is toward Jerusalem, the center of Jewish national life. In the second, the movement is from Jerusalem to other nations, closing with Paul, proclaiming the kingdom of God in Rome, the capital of the empire at that time. In the first book, Luke has written about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heavens, since he was powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. And in this second book, the book of Acts, he will write about what Jesus continued to do and to teach after his ascension, especially through the apostles. Does Jesus' ministry on earth exercised personally and publicly was followed by his ministry from heaven exercised through his Holy Spirit by his apostles. Jesus makes two promises in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. You will receive the power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. These promises are essential for us to remember as we participate in God's big story. As I reflect from this verse, let me share with you three stories. Firstly, the story of the Holy Spirit who brings power. The greatest danger in all evangelism or mission today is that we rely on the wrong things. Do we want to be faithful witness to Jesus Christ? Then we must have His power. Do we want to have His power? Then we must have His Spirit. There is perhaps no greater need in the contemporary church than that we should be filled with the Holy Spirit. What Jesus taught in Acts chapter 1, verse 8 is abundantly illustrated in the book of Acts in which we first see the outpouring of the Spirit on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2 and then watch Him push His people out as witnesses in ever-widening circle beginning in Jerusalem, the capital of the Jews, and ending in Rome, the capital of the world at that time. We need the Holy Spirit not only to bring us conversion and assurance, 
nor only to sanctify, enlighten, unite, and equip us, but also we need the Holy Spirit to reach out through us in blessings to an alienated world, like rivers of living water which irrigate the desert. The Holy Spirit not only internalized Jesus to bring each one of us to become more like Jesus, but at the same time, the Holy Spirit universalized Jesus through God's people wherever we go. The same Holy Spirit who sanctifies, unites, and builds up the church is also concerned to evangelize the world. For he is essentially a missionary spirit. This is clear from Jesus' teaching. He promised one day that the stream of living water would flow out from within each believer. And John added that he was referring to the Holy Spirit in John chapter 7, verse 38 to 39. No one can possess or rather be indwelled by the Spirit of God and keep that Spirit for himself. Where the Spirit is, he flows forth. If there is no flowing forth, he is not there. The book of Acts is strictly missionary book. The conclusion is, is resistible that the spirit given was in fact a missionary spirit. So then, we too must be missionaries, witnesses of God. Unless we are ready to deny the Holy Spirit of Christ as revealed in the book of Acts. So brothers and sisters, I think our fellowship should be committed to mission, both local mission and also global mission. Let us continue the story of the Holy Spirit who works with power among us. Secondly, the story of witnesses to the end of the earth. Jesus fulfilled his promises throughout his church in history. Christ captures the mission of the church in phrase. You can see in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, my witnesses, or in other translation, witnesses unto me. Witnesses do not invent their own message, but faithfully declare what they know to be true. To the witness of the church did not end with the apostles, but must continue to the end of the earth. For God's purpose is to bring this message concerning Christ and redemption to all nations. So the phrase, to the end of the earth, in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, does not only mean or refer to Rome, where Luke accounts end. The mission will not end there. Rome in Luke's day is the center of the empire and all roads lead from it to the end of the earth from its westward extent. For Luke, however, it signifies the proclamation of the gospel to all people wherever they may be. I believe that this commission is not only for the apostles, but it is clear from the rest of the book of Acts, this commission is given to all Christians. See, for example, in Acts chapter 8, verse 4, those who were scattered, except the apostle that time, they preached the word wherever they went. So Jesus Christ make his people, his church, a people in mission. The church exists to be witnesses. 
we are part we are all part of God's mission in this world from many years people think that the mission is from the west to the rest but now the mission is is from everywhere to everywhere thirdly my last point the story of God in my country Indonesia the history of the student movement in Indonesia is actually his story the history of the student movement in Indonesia can be traced back to God's work in Europe over a hundred years of history the student movement also started in my country Indonesia God had used many people throughout these years to bring the gospel to student in Indonesia from history we learn from the UK to Canada to Australia there are two of our graduates when they study in Australia they involved in the OCF overseas Christian fellowship and they experience the love of God and they want to start the same ministry in Indonesia so when they came back to Indonesia after they finished their study they started student ministry from the capital city Jakarta to other major cities Surabaya Makassar Medan God's work spread all over the country God started campus ministry and also high school ministry I came to know Christ through Perkantas IFES in Indonesia when I was in high school ministry in my hometown Makassar then I continued to grow as a disciple of Christ when I was in campus ministry in Jakarta and then I surrendered to God's calling as a staff worker in 1998 God has blessed Perkantas Indonesia abundantly as the largest Muslim populated country in the world we still thank God for the freedom to worship and also we praise God for his wonderful blessings for Perkantas now we have about 250 full-time staff worker all over the country and over 150 board members all over Indonesia <clears throat> but still there are 13,670 islands in my country but only one third inhabited but it's still a lot of work to do God also gave us opportunity to participate in the pioneering work in our region East Asia but again my, my brothers and sisters there are still many works to be done please continue to pray for us in my reflection on my journey I realized I am here today because the Holy Spirit had empowered many students and graduates in history to be Christ's witness in Indonesia and also from many parts of the world so let me share this one thought with you when you obey God to be his witness maybe the road is not easy imagine the incredible work that he can do through your through your life when you obey God's calling even it's not easy maybe one day you will see someone stand in front of you sharing the good news I do not think that all Christians must be cross-cultural missionaries 
in the technical or professional sense. Although, to be sure, this is a great and honorable calling to some of us here. I think that we are called to be witness to Jesus Christ at our home, our school, our campus, at our work, among friends and neighbor, and for this task, the power of the Holy Spirit is, is, is indispensable. At the end of the book of Acts, Luke wrote, For two whole years, Paul stayed there in his own rented house and welcomed all who, come, who came to see him. He proclaimed the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without hindrance. So brothers and sisters, Luke had, had finished his two volumes. But the God story, the story of God's kingdom continued. God's story is not finished yet. Now God is calling you to be his witnesses. God already gave his spirit to empower us to be his witness. We should ask, where is my Jerusalem, my Judea, my Samaria? So dear students, staff workers, board members, and friends of IFES from all over the world, let us continue to fulfill God's mission. Start from your Jerusalem. The Holy Spirit brings power in our life. The question, will you be his witness? God's story is not finished yet. Will you continue his story?